Hello everybody and uh, welcome to uh, this uh, strategy presentation um, from ATAB. We uh, started to communicate our new uh, direction in the, uh, in the spring and we made our first presentation at our annual general meeting. And uh, today I'm going to give you uh, a quick uh, presentation about our new direction, uh, where we're heading, why we're going in this direction, where we're coming from and so on. So uh, by that I would like to uh, begin and I um, um, hope this makes sense for all of you. Um, so, uh, starting out, I thought that um, who are we? What is ATAB? And uh, I think it's important that uh, we look very different depending on what we create together with our customers. And you could say that we are what we create together. Um, depending on the expectations on consumer experience, depending on the dilemma that the retailer has, we can provide many different things. And of course, we mainly work with grocery customers. We work with uh, uh, large uh, grocery chains across uh, Europe. Uh, we are supplying some of these chains also when they go across the globe into America, into Australia, across the world. We have a global reach when we support them. Uh, the grocery sector for us is a little bit above half of our turnover and is of course the most important uh, uh, sector for us. Number two is home improvements and here we're working with some um, uh, super successful brands and we're helping them with their expansions, we're helping them to constantly develop their consumer experience. Um, our third segment is the fashion uh, segment where we are working um, supporting uh, retailers with their interiors, with their experiences in how they take good care of customers, in how they uh, expand the expectations, how they provide safety and so on, and how they um, uh, try to evolve as they uh, are coping with the online threat. In the other or miscellaneous sector, we have uh, uh, many different groups. We have consumer electronics, we have pharmacists, that is important to us. And of course, we have service stations, uh, restaurants, uh, and so on. Uh, so there's uh, many, many different things that we do in, in order to try to help different brands uh, evolve in their consumer experience. And we do that by providing uh, solutions for uh, complete concepts of interiors. We do that by illuminating all the displays uh, to drive the best uh, uh, conversion and experience. We have uh, products to help to check out in an in a easy and uh, uh, seamless way. And of course, products to help to guide and steer the consumer flows. And uh, more and more, we're also helping our customers with their digital engagement uh, in the physical environment. And we really co-create our solutions uh, uh, based on trying to drive uh, consumer convenience and inspiration. Most of all in ATAB, I would say that we are people that are passionate. We are passionate about creating solutions. We are passionate about uh, manufacturing them, delivering them, and really um, helping uh, both ATAB and our customers to constantly evolve. And we are really passionate about the environment that we uh, both live in, create, and influence uh, through our work. And of course, being great um, is uh, important. And we are great, but uh, we are not good enough. There are so many things that we can do even better uh, for the future. And uh, that's kind of the segue into talking about our new direction. And uh, in order to understand our new direction, it is important to understand where we're coming from. And I would say that uh, the last couple of years, uh, we could go back even more than five years, but the last five years really imply a need for change. Uh, we have been very successful historically by growing through acquisitions. We have uh, really been on a, on a um, success journey when it comes to driving that growth through acquisitions. Organically, we have actually had 
negative growth if you look at the longer perspective. Uh, our turnover right now has been uh, stable uh, pre the COVID situation and the, uh, the pandemic that we find ourselves in, but we have had problems with the underlying profitability of our business. And the reasons for this is that the underlying business and the underlying retail climate has been in change for a number of years. And I would say that the whole industry and many retailers have been struggling to find find um, the new way to be successful in that changed environment. Um, we can see it materializing for us that uh, instead of having programs of expansions and rollouts that last for several years, we today are more looking into projects with, uh, that are smaller and that have shorter lead times. So you can say that instead of few large programs, we have many small projects. And that is, of course, affecting our production, it's affecting our logistics, and it's affecting all parts of our value chain. Uh, profit has been in decline in ATAB since 2015. And I would say that uh, in 2019, our SG&A ratio was historically high. We have not been successful enough when it comes to adapting our organization and our ways of working, our effectiveness to the new market environments. So we have um, a lot of things to do. At the same time, I would say that ATAB's growth through all these acquisitions historically has really been uh, something that has created a very diverse, a very multi-talented company with tons of experiences. And there is a lot of potential just waiting to be released because we have not worked enough when it comes to driving uh, synergies or building on the strengths that we have across the group. We find ourselves in a, I would say, a hundred year crisis. Uh, we are in a situation that none of us have experienced in the past and we're trying to understand how to deal with these challenges. Uh, we have seen that many opportunities arise that comes from the immediate uh, need of keeping ourselves, our co-workers, uh, our retailers, uh, co-workers, and of course all the consumers in retail safe and that they feel that this is an environment where I can uh, satisfy my needs but still um, uh, be safe and not risk anything. Um, Looking into the future, we believe that the collective memory of the COVID pandemic, when we, come to, when we come out of this and when things start to settle into a new normal, whatever that is, we believe that the collective memory is going to be quite strong and that people are going to remember um, uh, this. So things like social distancing, things like uh, that you want to feel safe when you're queuing, that you want to have opportunities if you don't want the ones that are offered to you, if they don't feel good. Um, consumers want to know more. Not only is this environment safe, it's also are these products safe? Is this good for me and my family? So we believe that this is going to accentuate the development that our impact on people, on society, on the planet, the environment around us is just going to become more and more important. And there are many, many things that we need to do together to create a better shopping experience in the future. And I believe also that many retailers truly need to think about how to avoid complete lockdowns in the future, how to operate maybe at a reduced capacity, but that is safe for people uh, in terms of co-workers and consumers. If you look at ETAB then, uh, trying to forget for a second that we are in this pandemic, you can say that even before the pandemic, ETAB was struggling with, uh, uh, with our underlying profitability. You can say that today we are 45 operational companies. We, are, um, we have not really leveraged um, a lot of synergies uh, when we have acquired all these companies. So we are a group, but we are not acting as one. Uh, we have quite a broad product portfolio, but we don't have enough cross sales across the different regions, of, uh, across the different companies. Uh, today we are quite product oriented. Uh, we are a bit, um, sometimes we are providing solutions that are amazing to our customers, but sometimes we're falling into the trap of mainly talking about our product and our historical successes instead of taking a, a genuine interest into the current and here and now dilemmas that retailers face. When we do that, and we do that across the group, we are very, very successful, and we want to do that even more in going forward into the future. We, um, 
uh, I would say that we have a, a very large and uh, uh, diverse customer base. We uh, work with small accounts, large accounts, and I believe that going forward we need to uh, look into this, where we are best and where we maybe need to improve and where we should focus. Um, today our footprint when it comes to manufacturing is really dispersed. Uh, we are um, not optimizing where we have our strongest capacities, uh, where we have the best capabilities and we are a little bit uh, uh, behind when it comes to organizing our supply chain in the most efficient and optimal way. Uh, to sum it up, I would say that the current operating model is no longer as valid as it used to be in the past and we need to change our ways of working in order to become successful for the future. We've been setting a direction by co-creating the future of ATAB together, together with colleagues across the group, together with retailers and our customers, and also together with consumers from around the world. Um, and it's important to start with the consumer because that we all we are all consumers, and I think we have all experienced the changes around us, where technology has enabled us to be much more informed, where technology has enabled us to become much more co connected. And sometimes there is a little bit too much focus on maybe the technology piece, and not enough on the basic human needs that are out there. And we can see that there are some some real changes in consumer behavior that billions of people are now connected and they trust each other in a way that is uh, uh, much stronger than what they trust the information that comes from governments, that comes from um, uh, brands uh, um, um, or institutions. They really trust their social networks more, which sometimes creates uh, uh, problems because which information is true, uh, where are the facts, and it's just the society that we're in, that we're in a networked information society. Uh, personalization, being able to uh, materialize and fulfill each individual's uh, uh, potential to the best is really what people are focused on and we need to, they want to be guided, they want to really be uh, supported in that and they want to be treated in a seamless way when they move across different channels. Today it is difficult to do that online in a good way, some retailers are really good online doing that, but when you try to do that in a multi-channel context it's it's really difficult and there's a lot to be done, especially in the physical environment where you can leverage online data and you can also support data from the physical uh, experience uh, to the online. So you create that true seamlessness. What is important is, of course, to drive simplicity and convenience. It needs to be simple, it needs to be convenient, it should be effortless when you want that. And you should really be able to save time uh, and take care of a time that is so valuable. And then experiences and self-fulfillment, that is really when you want to invest your time to be inspired, to develop, to learn. And these changes in consumer behavior has been quite significant and tangible for many retailers. Uh, a lot of people aspire to live a more healthy and sustainable life. And we need to be able to support them in doing that. And of course, these consumer, uh, the changes in consumer behavior, it's driven by um, online experiences. It's driven by the personalization, the instant gratification that you can get online. And these expectations consumers bring with them into the physical shopping. And it's so important to really understand and focus on convenience and to focus on inspiration and to make sure that we take care of the time in the way that the consumer wants. And it's really about, it's not about one size fits all or one size fits uh, an individual, depending on the mood or the mode that you're in. If you just want a quick snack or if you want to be inspired what you're going to cook for a Friday night dinner, you are the same individual, but you have very different expectations on what your retailer needs to support you with. And of course, retailers are trying to find the new recipe for success. Their old recipes are not always working, and they're trying to find new ways of doing this by building flagship stores, city center locations, pickup points, maybe a, a learning studio, a planning studio. They're, they're trying to find the new way of satisfying consumers in more diverse ways. And of course, this experimentation, we believe, is going to continue, and it's going just to increase. 
sometimes you talk about that uh, retail is dead, uh, the physical retail, the physical store. And at Data, we don't believe that at all. On the contrary, we believe that uh, bad experience is dead. And if you're not relevant as a retailer, then you will not uh, survive. It's really uh, the competition has become more and more fierce and you need to be on your toes and you need to constantly develop if you want to continue uh, to be successful. So retailers need to reinvent themselves in order to stay relevant. And they need to adapt to the consumer behaviors. Um, the online experiences makes retailers forced to invest. You are forced to invest in your online experience as a physical retailer, a classical brick and mortar, but you also need to invest in your physical store. And this is difficult because there is only so much resources available and you need to make your choices. So we believe that uh, solutions that are really uh, truly helping to drive efficiency, to drive conversion, and also to help to, cr to connect the different channels are important for many retailers. And um, this is something that uh, we see that many retailers are struggling with. Some have cracked the code for now, and others are about to do that. But <clears throat> in general, it is very different. And it's not one size fits all also here. It is very different depending on who you are. <clears throat> of course, then, if you look at discount retailers and true discount retailers, they still follow their own logic. They still can do things in a way that uh, all retailers cannot do if, because they have a clear position and the consumers know what to expect from them. <clears throat> so you don't apply the same expectations on some brands as you do on other brands. For us um, in the, and our fellow colleagues in the business that we are operating in, <clears throat> we can see that there is a clear change from companies that are more traditional uh, into uh, new types of competition that comes from new angles. Um, there are also a lot of new ecosystems coming to life with uh, strategic partnerships and there's much more focus on being solution oriented and driving the, the, the retail change. If you try to kind of consolidate this, it's really that consumers are driving uh, our market. So the changing consumer needs is really making retailers uh, uh, forced to change. It is uh, for us at ETA meaning that we need to do many things in order to stay relevant. And we really need to become much more better in explaining what is the outcome from our solutions. What is the retailer value that we will drive? Um, where does the solution come from? What is the insight? Has it been validated together with a consumer or not? And we need to really be close to our um, uh, customer stakeholders, which means the strategy teams, the marketing teams, and so on. Um, we are already today supported by a strong network of partners. And going forward, that needs to become even stronger. And we need to be more deliberate and focused on who we're partnering up with in order to create the best solutions for the retailer and for the consumer. And of course, we need to become much more agile and flexible in our operations. Uh, parts of our uh, problems today by staying uh, profitable is that when we need to be agile and when we need to react fast, we are not as efficient as we were when we had longer series to produce. Uh, and of course, we need to be able to provide the market with one view of what ATAB is. And it's really about becoming one ATAB, so it's clear for retailers what to expect, that we're building our strengths and that we're sharing our experiences across the markets and that we can share experiences in what we're doing with the grocery customers in Italy, with maybe uh, grocery chains in UK or in the Nordic countries and so on. That we really build on experiences across the borders and we become that one ATAB that becomes the retailer's best friend. Um, and that we internally become better by working better together. We're trying to sum up this in ATAB, that uh, this is our mission statement, that at ATAB we help our customers turn consumer brand experience into physical reality with our know-how, solutions and ecosystems of partners. And this is super important. It is not we that create the, the, the brand experience. Uh, we can help to co-create it. We can help to realize it. And we are focusing on the physical reality. But that physical reality today is a mix of digital and physical experiences. So we have the solutions for that. And we have the know-how. And we have it through our own experience, but also through our partners. Our strategy is built on seven priorities. Uh, 
And I would like to go through them because they're really influencing the strategic execution that we are in the middle of right now. The first one is about being a solution provider. That is to start about with understanding the retailer dilemma, trying to understand how we create the retailer outcome and retailer value uh, through solutions that we co-create. And it is really about uh, not starting with what we have in our portfolio of either solutions or products, but really being curious about what is it that we can bring to the table together and with our partners. It also means that we need to have a more dynamic approach to services in the future and make that part of our solution landscape. It's about developing an ecosystem of partners. Today we have thousands of partners across ATAB and we believe that's a, a big strength that we have, but we need to focus on the ones that are truly strategic and important for us in driving change for real going forward. So we are going to really establish a stronger and knitted network of partners. We're going to focus on fewer of them and we are really going to uh, drive out complexity and um, improve the predictability in our, um, in our supply chain. We're going to focus and drive excellence in operations. This means that we are going to really work with continuous improvements. We're going to love and we're going to embrace our deviations because it's an opportunity to learn. We're going to do this constantly. Um, we believe in first time right and in the agreed time. And this needs to become a mantra. It needs to become something that we are obsessed about so we can drive continuous improvements and, and drive cost out of uh, um, the organization. And it's really about reducing lead times and improving quality. Focus on the time, focus on the quality, and really uh, set common operational KPIs across the group. So you can learn from each other and not just from your own deviations. It's about uh, um, a future that is more sustainable. It's about a future that where we can hand over um, the world in a better place than what we found it. Uh, it's really about collaborating with our retailers and with our suppliers to continuously innovate and drive sustainability. It's not just about uh, the products and the carbon footprint, it's about if the solution can help. It's about if the, the collaboration can help to make this a better place. Not just for the environment, but for people and the society at large. Uh, it's about setting uh, clear goals, embracing that you're not perfect when you start. Uh, um, focus on the improvement, focus on the movement, and be ambitious about where you're going. And also, it's about our people, that we need to become a much more diverse and modern uh, workplace, and that we become uh, a better reflection of the society that we live in. The fifth strategic priority is about expanding our market position. This is not about growing across uh, even more geographies. That can be one solution, but it's mainly about building on the strengths and our core competences. Because we have so many strengths in ATAB, but we are not leveraging them in the same way across the group. So this is really about, in the markets where we're already existing, we need to expand our position by leveraging our strengths. Uh, we have so many cross-sector strengths and cross-sector experiences and portfolio of solutions that we can offer to our customers across. And we believe that it's really going to strengthen us on our prioritized markets. Then, um, maybe most important of all is the, the people that are going to do this. And we really need to empower people. Uh, one way of doing that is to set common ways of working. Most important is to provide them with the information that they need. If you have the right information at hand, if you know the people that are dependent on you, you usually take the right decisions. And here we need to improve when it comes to securing that people have the mandate to take decisions and that they have the information they need to take the right decisions. So it means that we need to establish parallel, transparent and collaborative ways of working. We need to have shared processes and we need to have the tools that support this so the information will be there. And then I think uh, for many of you that have invested in ATAB and that are um, eager to see that we improve our profitability, we're going to re-engineer our cost structure. We're really going to make sure that we do our homework and we drive out all unnecessary costs. We're going to ensure profitability and sustainability in our growth. Uh, we're going to drive synergies. We're going to really leverage the scale of economy that comes from being uh, the leading European uh, solution provider. 
we're, we're going to really focus on the fixed cost and not just on the, the operational uh, uh, flexible costs. We're go really going to reduce our fixed costs and optimize our supply chain. We're going to streamline many more things than what we have done today. And we're going to set up a more lean, a more dynamic organization, both in the front end of the value chain and in the back end of the value chain. And we're really going to focus on our core markets and our core capabilities and not become too distracted by all the other opportunities that are out there. It is always like that, that the opportunities are more than the resources that you have to invest. So we need to become much more focused when we are re-engineering our cost structure. And then, of course, the value of strategy, it isn't, it's not by uh, doing a PowerPoint presentation and sharing it with many people. That's one part of it in order for people to have common goals and to know where we're going. It's really about uh, delivering on the strategy and making sure that it takes physical form and real life, that people understand it, are empowered and really move the targets. Here we have done many things and we're in the middle of executing our strategy and we have several uh, great things that have happened. And I want to share that we have built uh, or started to build and we're in the middle of building uh, new capabilities. Um, so it's about relationship management, it's about solution and service sales, it's about designing for manufacturing, so we don't forget about that. So wh whatever we agree with the retailers, it's optimal to produce as well, and that we keep this complete value chain approach uh, from the beginning. Uh, that we set up agile and lean operations so we can be flexible and we can learn and we can continuously improve. We need to, be, uh, to get new capabilities when it comes to competence, when it comes to knowledge sharing, how to share learnings, that is super important, and to really leverage the network of experiences. And of course, this requires shared information and shared IT solutions and the common processes that we're building on. And then we have set up a number of uh, execution capabilities to help us to really drive this. So we have the shared direction, one ATAB. We have a new group structures internally that uh, makes it more clear for these 45 operational units, which part of the group are they part of? What is their role in the bigger picture when it comes to satisfy, satisfying our retailers and consumer needs? Uh, we have expanded our group management, so we now have a, a better inclusion, we have better diversity, and we have better decision making and execution. We have uh, the complete group represented uh, in a better way than before. We have also, I would say, invested in new competence with experience from driving change at scale. Um, so both in group management and in the organization. And we are also partnering with external partners in order to secure that we don't need to invent everything ourselves. We can build on the learnings from others, both to secure expertise in the solutions we need to create for ourselves, but also the capacity to drive the change. And then, of course, we are linking all our targeted incomes to our incentives. So we are making sure that the whole group is working towards the one ATA plan. And what is the expected outcome when you come out of this uh, transformation? Of course, we will build on our strengths. We will focus more on our core markets. I've spoken about this uh, today. We will really focus on creating real uh, retailer value uh, by becoming the solution provider and through solution selling skills. We're going to invest in our people and build their competence. And we're going to invest in new differentiating capabilities. We're going to strengthen our position as the market leader in Europe. We're going to simplify our operational structure. It will become less complex. We're going to optimize our footprint on landed cost. So we're not uh, looking at who has the cheapest production or the best sourcing. We're looking at the entire total landed cost in front of the retailer when we're optimizing. We will partner with fewer and more strategic suppliers we're really significantly going to reduce our debt. Those of you that follow us have seen that we have truly done this over 
the last year and we're going to continue to do that to reduce our debt and find ourselves being uh, better balanced financially. And we're going to get back to historic profitability. And when, um, we have just issued, uh, before the summer, we issued a guidance for our, uh, our future profitability once we come uh, through this transformation plan. And we also offered some guidance on how much the transformation is going to cost us. So this is um, uh, something that is super important for us. And it's going to really uh, secure that we come back to the historic profitability. And uh, just to finish off to, with this, that at Tata we help customers to turn consumer brand experience into fiscal reality with our know-how, solutions, and ecosystem of partners. Thanks. <laughs>